Today I want to tell you a little bit about the Netgear ReadyNAS, but specifically for photographers. When we first moved into our studios at improvephotography.com, we got in there and we were all excited. We started shooting for a while and then we quickly realized that there's no way that all our photos could fit on one computer. Even with multiple hard drives, it just started to get too big, even for two hard drives on any single machine. And then the other problem was we wanted to access all of our photos, our entire photo library, from not only one desktop, but the other desktop in the computer in the studio, and also from a laptop, and sometimes from home I wanted to see the photos on the server, and uh, it just didn't work with a normal computer. So after outgrowing that solution, we knew we had to move to a, a NAS device, a network-attached storage. Now the advantage, first of all, of a network attached storage device is you have four bays uh, of hard drives. So if you put in four three terabyte drives, you have, do your little math, 12 terabytes, which can fit a lot of data. Now that was a really nice advantage for us that we could have so much and have everything in one device. But the other thing that we liked is how easy it is to attach to the network. When you turn the device around and it is heavy, you simply plugged it into the power and then you attach an ethernet cord and you're ready to go. You uh, will be able to see it on your network and all the computers attached to that same network are able to, uh, to see the photos. Now one mistake that a lot of people make when they first get started with a um, NAS device and I didn't make this mistake is that uh, it is network attached. So um, when I was looking for these, I was looking for one that had USB 3 because what I really wanted to do was have USB 3 so I could attach the computers to it and get really fast transfer speeds and then also attach the network uh, with an ethernet cable so that I could uh, access it over the internet. Um, but I learned that that's not quite how it works. It really does just have to go through the network no matter what you do. Um, so you're gonna attach your computers via Ethernet. So we have all of our computers going into a, an Ethernet hub and to the router and then this also attaches to the router and you're ready to go. So if you just have one computer that's going to attach to the NAS device, just grab your computer, plug it into the router, then another Ethernet cable from the NAS to the router, you're ready to go. And then uh, the, the transfer speeds is the thing that I was really concerned with. At first, we didn't have very good results with this NAS. Uh, you know, we were around oh, five megabytes a second, and it was just painfully slow. And the more files you grab, you know, if you grab 100 files and you want to move them to a different location, it goes really slow, like 10 kilobytes a second. It was just unreasonable. And so we called customer support, and that's one thing that I can definitely give um, Netgear props on is their support. They really were quite good. Uh, we called in, and they, I, if I remember right, you have 90 days of support uh, when you buy one of these devices, and they really helped us out. We were able to set up a static IP on our computer, and then suddenly the transfer rates went way up. Now, most of the time, we're seeing between 50 and 70 megabytes per second, which uh, you can find faster for sure, but uh, for a network attached storage, that's pretty decent right now. Um, if you get something like a Drobo, it, uh, you have the advantage of much faster transfer uh, rates, but the, there are two big advantages this has over the Drobo. One is price. This is way less money than a Drobo is, a comparable Drobo. And then the second thing is this is not proprietary, using a proprietary uh, way that the drives are blended together so that it looks like one big drive. Drobo's is proprietary, so if, you're, if your device crashes, you have all your data on there, and you can't get it off uh, without having another Drobo. And that's just a killer for me. I just hate that kind of stuff. And so I, I like going with something that's you know popular that everybody has so that it's easy to get your data off should something happen. Now, should something happen is where this really uh, wins for me, is we have one of these in the studio, and 
uh, we were able to sync it over Ethernet. So we have, you know, when we started with seven terabytes of data, we were able to sync it fast over Ethernet. And then once they were synced, I took the other one of these, we bought two of them, I took the other one to my house. And the, the reason we do that is when we change a file here at two o'clock the next morning, it just syncs the files over the internet to my, to my ready NAS at home. Now, something like Carbonite, Backblaze, uh, those uh, internet storage solutions sound great that you can have your data online, but the problem is that uh, it's you'll often beat the internet. You're producing more data than the internet's going to be able to pass. Uh, than the internet's going to be able to pass over. But because we can sync it locally here, close over Ethernet, and then just have the updates going over uh, the internet over at two o'clock in the morning, works really, really great for us. So if you're a photographer and you have a ton of video and photos to uh, put on a device, I would really recommend taking a look at the Netgear Ready NAS. For looking at this specific one that we're using, you can go to improvephotography.com slash NAS, N-A-S, and we'll set you up with a link uh, where we um, will link you right to this specific one that we're using. Uh, works great. You can find a little bit faster transfer rates with something like a Drobo, but in terms of uh, price and also something that you is not proprietary, I think the Netgear Ready NAS is a real winner. So thanks for joining me on this video tutorial in know-how and please join me on improvephotography.com for tons of tips, tricks, and articles that we write all about photography subjects there.